my name's Kirk Johnstone and you're watching On The Trowel. Today we're going to be plastering a kitchen here. It's one o'clock now, we've got filling out to do, we've got all sorts to do, so we haven't got much time, we need to get cracking. Okay, so this is today's job. As I said, it's one o'clock, so we haven't got much time to mess around. We've got to fill all these little chases out here, here, little holes and stuff that are going to need filling. Then we've got to seal all the walls with SBR, let that set before we can even start skimming. So there's not much time to mess around. This job's going to be done today. There's no time to come back. And we've pulled off another job to come here today to do this. All I'm thinking in my head right now is, come on Kirk, hurry up, get this in fast. This needs to be in and it needs to set before we can start skimming. So if you notice as well, I haven't put any sealer inside where the chasers are going. Now, bonding, again, as you know, is for low suction backgrounds, but we're not going to seal it because I want the, the, the suction to pull this stuff in so we can skim over it faster. It will shrink a little bit, but ultimately, it'll be set in the same time as the finishing plaster going in, so it'll all, it'll all come in together tight. These little bits between the sockets are always a peg to fill. Now, some fellas don't bother because they say, oh, the socket faces will be touching. But I don't like to rely on that. I think it's better just to just have a little bit of plaster in there, just in case. So you just fill it up like that. And then just before it sets, just cut it out. So you haven't got loads of stuff to try and break off at the end. Now, I know it doesn't look super neat yet. But once the finish goes on, that'll come down lovely. Okay, so that's all of the chases filled everywhere. That was the, the first order of priority, get, get all the bonding done fast, because that's going to take the longest to set. Now, that's done. The next most important thing is to get this sealer on as fast as possible. So Kieran is putting SBR on all the areas that we're going to plaster because that needs to ultimately go at least tacky before we can start plastering. And as soon as that's done, the skim is going straight on. Now, whilst Kevin's doing that, I'm gonna get all the beads nailed on and get everything else ready. Um, we are currently at 20 past one now, so the time is ticking away. Right, all the SBR is on, everywhere sealed, all the beads are on, and all the chases are filled out of bonding. It's literally just a case now of waiting for the first part of the wall that we did, the first section that we put the SBR on. As soon as that starts to dry in a little bit, then we can get skimming. So, not long now. The time now is basically quarter to two. The bonding that we've put in is going really firm, and that's because we let the suction get hold of it. So we could literally skim over this now. It's, it's firm enough to take finish so we can get skimming. Okay, this has started to dry enough now for us to start skimming. So the time is now eight minutes to two. Kieran's gonna mix some plaster and we wanna basically start skimming by two o'clock at the latest. Uh, usually a mix of plaster takes about three hours three and a half hours depending uh, we might be using a bit of accelerator on the second coat but we'll see how fast the first coat pulls in and we'll make a decision on that as we're skimming so mix up key let's get going
Okay, so we've been asked to plaster the kitchen side, not the dining room side, and they only want me to go as far as the radiator. So we're gonna have to blend in here. We've took the SBR past where we're gonna blend in, and before we get started, I'm gonna make sure that I don't leave a ridge. I'm gonna blend in straight from the get-go. SBR is still soaking somewhere. Evidently. Can you see it? Yeah. I can see SBR mixing in with the plaster as I'm doing it. Okay. Okay, so try and make these videos as real life as possible for you. We've got a little bit of a situation where in some places on this wall the SBR is still wet, which causes the stuff to slide around. So I'll show you how to deal with that if it becomes an issue. With PVA glue, when the PVA is too, too wet and the plaster slides, it mixes with the plaster and goes, makes the plaster go like chewing gum. SBR isn't quite like that. It doesn't have such a bad reaction with the plaster, it, but it does make it a bit of a pain. So what you want to do is just get it on as flat as you can and just leave it to pick up. If it's sliding, don't keep messing around with it. Just get it as good as you can and leave it. And as that first coat starts to pull in, hopefully by the time you come to second coat it, it'll have calmed down and it'll sort of stay put where it is. If it slides when you're second coating, then you've just got to leave the stuff. If it's sliding around when you're second coating, leave it, brush it with a wet brush and don't touch it. Give it about half an hour, brush it again, and then try and trowel it. It should stay still. But again, if it moves, just repeat that process. Brush it, plenty of water, leave it. Remember the corners. Take a little bit, go in neat. Take a little bit, go in neat. Take a little bit, neat. I always say to Karen, it's like my primary school, Mrs. Pegram. My primary school teacher, she always used to say to me when we were colouring in, I want it neat. Stay within the lines, children. So that's how you want to be plastering. Don't be getting it all over the place. Stay on the surface that you're working on. Fill these beads out as you're going. Always up and down your beads. Never out to them. Don't curl them out like the letters see. We've got a little bit of wet SBR here as well. <laughs> now, starting points on walls. Some fellas like to put just a band across the top and work up to it. Some fellas come so far down, do the middles. Ultimately, I just do a sort of a band across the top and then bring the bottom up. Just to limit the amount of times we're going back and forth across a wall. There was a few, there's a few little hairline cracks in these walls, but I have been all over and checked them. And all over, they're absolutely solid. There's no hollow sections. So that tells me that these cracks, they're actually shrinkage splits. Because it's sand and cement, someone has skimmed over the sand and cement before it's had a chance to cure. So that's what happens. You end up with little splits in the wall. They're not cracks as such. There's no movement. It's just the material. Imagine like a desert landscape. You've seen dry mud when it shrinks and splits. Sand and cement can do the same thing when you've skimmed over it too soon. It will shrink and you get these little splits all over. See that catch? I dropped a little bit, but I caught it. <laughs> what it is, I've got, I've got this board, it's trained. It took a few years to train it, but it does what I want it to now. Oh, 
we filming? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, I'll tell you a little debate that always goes on inside my head is, should I put all the heads and reveals in? Heads, reveals, head, reveals. Should I do them all after all the walls are on? Or should I do them as I'm going around? So I've just literally put this wall on and before I start that wall, pick these up on the way around. See, some fellas like to leave them till the next mix or whatever, but we're only having one mix. This is all going on in one. And for years, I just like doing them at the end, but I've got in the mindset and the habit now, just do them as you're going, because they're basically a pain in the ass. So if I just get them out the way, whilst I'm going on, then it's not like a big ordeal at the end of the gauge. The, planes, the last thing you want is it for, to, for it to be all over all the door frames. Now this is the only bit I ever struggle with because I've only got a four inch wide trowel. My knuckles get in the way. There, I can't get round into the end. So I end up having to use the toe of my trowel and just putting it in like that and then just coming across it to make sure it's flat. Oh, I did forget to tell you just then as well. Although I do struggle to get in because my knuckles get in the way like that. If I hold my trowel with my fingers, I can get in. There you go. It does reach in if you hold your trowel with your fingers. So that's where one bag's got us from. We've gone from there. Oh, focus. Focus. We've got that, that wall, we've got the top of that wall, there's still the bottom to do, and the head and reveals, and we've got this wall left to do here as well. So Kieran's just mixing up another bag now. It's probably gonna take us two bags to put it on, and then it'll be one bag to second coat it. Okay, now ultimately, this section of the kitchen is gonna have work tops right around here, worktops all the way around. So everything from there down isn't seen. So you'd say, okay, Kirk, why are you going all the way down to these pipes? What's the point? No one's gonna see it. It takes me literally no longer. And what, you know, a handboard's, a hawk's worth, a hawk's worth of material to do it. When the customer comes in or the kitchen fitter and sees it all looking absolutely gorgeous, no, no old walls showing it just looks better and it literally takes me no extra time so people always ask me whether they should scrim these chases when they're filled out so we've filled out a bond in here should we have scrimmed it well coming closer here's the thing this is solid and this is solid there's no hollow sounds whatsoever so i know that isn't moving on the brick and neither's that so ultimately Textbook, yes, scrimmel, just to be safe. But if the background's solid, if it's not plasterboard and it's well bonded to the wall, then there's no reason why it should crack. So I personally wouldn't bother unless it was plasterboard or unless the walls were a little bit hollow and loose. That's the first coat on. Now, because we didn't give the SBR time to fully cure, we've still got a bit of background suction from where the bare plaster was. So we're not gonna need to put accelerator in it because there's certain bits that are really pulling in quite fast. So like here, you know, I mean, it's okay, but we don't want it to set any faster, really. We don't want to sort of make it too difficult for ourselves to get a nice job. Because ultimately, yeah, it's nice to get home early, but the job's gonna be perfect. So Kevin's gonna mix up in a minute. We've got a little bit of stuff left. I'm gonna start second coat with what's left there. If you're a beginner, you're probably best off slinging that and mixing up some fresh, but I'm gonna use that wet stuff to go over the first bucket that we put on. So I'm gonna get cracking on that and Kieran's gonna get ready to mix again. Now the same as before, when you're putting your second coat in, you wanna be blending that in as well, feathering that in. I'm just going a little bit past where your first coat went. So there's no big ridges whatsoever. It's just all going to blend in nicely when you start traveling up. So it's second coat going on now. Same technique. Take a little bit. Going neat. 
Take a little bit, and neat. Take a little bit, and neat. Now, this, again, is one of those where the walls are a little bit out of shape. So I'm trying to get them as straight as I can, but you can feel it with your trowel. The more trowel lines you're leaving, as long as your trowel isn't bent, it's usually an indicator that the wall's out of shape. So you want to try and get it as flat as you can, but ultimately remember, there's only so much you can do with finishing plaster. It's not designed to be going on, you know, an inch thick. Just try, try and get as many lines out of it as possible. The last thing you want to do is let it set with a big line like that, you know, and you come to try and start troweling it up and you, you've got to try and get big, heavy lines out of your work. So, it's faster to go slower and neater than what it is to go fast and messy and then struggle. That's it. We're all on. Everything now is second coated. So we're going to give it a quick flatten round. The time is exactly now half three. So, all going to plan, we should be out finished for about half four, quarter to five. We'll be out of here. But let's see, let's see how we get on. Okay, so remember that we didn't give the SBR time to fully cure. So it'll do its job as a bonding agent, but it's not completely controlling the suction. Now with these backgrounds, we had sections that were painted and sections that were bare plaster. And what you find is the bits that were painted will stay nice and wet. But the bits that were bare plaster, like down, like up here is wet. I can easily leave my finger marks, come in close, come in close. Look at the finger marks, I can easily leave there, yeah? Nice and wet, okay? Now, that's over paint. Look, down here. This was over bare plaster. See, this is going off a lot quicker. So in these areas, what I'm having to do is just brush it with a bit of water like this give it a little brush all over only the bits that have pulled in and if you brush it you can see there's a few things if i was to flick water at it i wouldn't know where it needs it and where it doesn't but if you can see now come in close again i'm brushing here so i know this needs water here because i can feel it firm and as i go up there i can feel the texture difference i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to feel that if i splashed it so i know i don't need to go any higher that's wet up there and then this section down here because it's just been brushed in a bit of water it just starts coming down nice So we're still just flattening in, but I'm have to use quite a bit of water in some sections just to lubricate the plaster because the suction from the background is really pulling where we haven't given the SBR a chance to cure. Now remember as well, there's, there's always a few variables that you're working against when you're plastering. Yes, you've got the stuff, you've got the stuff setting, the chemical reactions taking place. You've also got suction from the background that's pulling moisture out of the plaster. You've got wind or breeze. Think of plaster like um, clothes on the washing line. There's moisture in it, and when the wind blows on your washing outside, it dries them out faster. Same thing with plaster. And you've also got temperature. So today's a warmish day, not cold. We've got a bit of a breeze, but that's mainly to cool me down because I'm warm. We've got suction and the stuff setting, so we've got it all working against us but also in our favour because as long as you don't lose control of it the faster it goes off the faster you can go over now anyone with a keen eye might have noticed that I've swapped trials this 
this one's slightly wider. Still 14 inch carbon steel. I was um, I was messing around in the workshop the other day before we went to Switzerland and I was just cleaning up a few old trowels. I thought, you know what? It's been a few years. It's been a few years since this one's been out, so I thought I'll give it a little run for its money. That's it now, second wet trowel. It'll just be a polish after this. And always remember as well, to come across your skirting boards. If there's no skirting board on, just run across like that to make sure there's no bulges because uh, you know, you've got to look after these joiners. They have it hard enough, you know, nailing bits of wood together. So you always want to make sure that you make their job nice and easy for them. Okay, come, look, as well. We've just given that the third trowel, or basically the second wet trowel now, so that just needs a polish. I've got to go around in a minute and just clean these boxes out, these socket boxes, because we've got to look after the electricians. Um, but as well, when I was here, I noticed this. I was, um, just talking to the decorator, they've got rid of a socket round here. So, uh, there's a little extra, a little freebie for them. Oh, I just nipped in and patched this up. That'll keep them happy, you know. It's easier to do this when the stuff's a little bit wetter. Because if you take a little bit too much out, if you chip a little bit, you know, you can always smear a little bit back in again. Look at this one. <laughs> Hello? Anybody in there? Dickhead. It's 20 past five and we're still here. But we're done now. I'm just brushing these angles in. Yeah, I'll show them the angles came. Here we go. This is it. Nearly finished. Let's get them brushed in nice like that. That one to do. Um, we have to give the floor a good wipe and that's it, we're done. Now I want you to make me a promise. If any of you guys know me in person, then you need to swear that you'll never ever tell my wife that you see me on my hands and knees scrubbing floors, okay? Now that's it, the job's done. Everywhere's polished, we're all cleaned up, everything's nice and smart. And the best part of the job, we got paid. We'll see you on the next one. 5.30, four and a half hours, job done. Let's go. Could you take on loads more work? Would you like more money? See, I've created a simple step-by-step -step process that anyone can follow, any tradesman, and basically, I show you how to fully leverage social media to bring in work. I also show you how to fully leverage Google to get your business ranked number one, so when people Google tradesmen like yourself in your area, you pop up first. It's a real simple process and I explain it all in a private Facebook group. You're welcome to join. All you need to do is click on the link in the description, fill out the form and jump on a consultation call with me. If I think we're a good fit and I can help you, because I don't want to waste your time or my own, but if I think I can help you, I'd love to work with you. Link's in the description.